Have you ever wondered how to store pigeons? Probably not, but mathematicians think about this all the time. Let's do an easy example. Let's say that I have three pigeons and two pigeon cages, or pigeon holes if you like. And I don't want to hold on to all my pigeons, so I need to put them into their pigeon holes. Well, it should be pretty clear that I won't be able to give every pigeon its own individual hole because I only have two pigeon holes. So maybe I want to cram all three pigeons into one hole, and that's kind of mean to the pigeons, and leave one hole empty. Or I can put two in one and one in the other, but that still means that somebody's going to have to share. Really what we're talking about is the fact that there is a pigeon hole which has at least two pigeons. That should be pretty clear, right? If that's clear, then so is the pigeonhole principle. The pigeonhole principle is often used in terms of pigeons and pigeonholes, but really you could talk about any objects going into any containers. That would work out the same. Let me write down the pigeonhole principle for you, and I'll use pigeons and pigeonholes. Why not? So let's state the pigeonhole principle, which, by the way, is sometimes abbreviated to PHP, not to be confused with coding in any way. Let's state the pigeonhole principle. It says that if we have n pigeons, and don't worry, I don't have three anymore, I have n, any number, any number of pigeons, and I have k pigeonholes. And now you can talk about pigeons flying into the pigeonholes or placing them in, that doesn't matter. You have n pigeons going into k pigeonholes. And you also know that n is bigger than k then you can conclude that there will be a pigeonhole that contains at least two pigeons. Really straightforward, right? Now, this has a few different ways of being stated, and there are several more advanced ways. But using just this most simple method, what I want to do is show you a nice example using graph theory. So let's say we have n people in a room. Now, you might be thinking, this doesn't sound like graph theory. Aha, just wait a moment. You have n people in a room and they all start shaking hands. In fact, maybe some of them don't shake hands, maybe some of them shake lots of hands. We don't care how that goes. People are shaking hands in a room, and there's n people. And the, the claim goes like this. I claim to you that it turns out in this room there will be at two people who shake the same number of hands. Hmm, how do you know that that's true? Well, we can use the pigeonhole principle. Now let's set up our graph. I've told you we have n people. Let's let each of those people be one single vertex. So now we have a graph with n vertices. And any time one person shakes somebody else's hand, so some other person, we put an edge between those two vertices. So really what we're saying is that in this graph, there should be at least two vertices that have the same degree. How can we show that? Well, let's think about the degrees and what's possible. Let's say I'm a single person, so I'm just sitting right here as a vertex, and I see n minus 1 other people. So I could shake hands with nobody, 0 would be my degree, or I could shake hands with one person and have degree 1, or 2, or 3, all the way up to n minus 1. But since I'm not going to shake hands with myself, that's not part of the rules of the game, I'm going to have options, 0 through n minus 1. So let's write that down. These are my degree options. Okay, so I've told you that we're planning to use the pigeonhole principle. And if you're trying to jump ahead of me, you're thinking, okay, we have n people, so like n pigeons, and we're going to be putting them into n minus 1 boxes, so those could be maybe thought of as the degrees. And at the moment, I actually have n choices, right? Look, I have 1 through n minus 1 as well as 0. So I have n options for the degree, and you might think the pigeonhole principle can't be used. But it can. Here's why. Think about somebody who doesn't shake anybody's hand. If there is somebody with degree zero, then that person has degree zero, but think about everybody else. There cannot be anybody else who shakes hands with everyone having degree n minus one because they can't shake hands with this person over here having degree zero. So what that's telling you is that if anybody decides to not shake hands with anyone, then there cannot be anybody over here who shook hands with everyone. 
And in this case, we have exactly n minus 1 options from 0, 1, 2, up until n minus 2. Now let's say we have the other way around. Maybe we do um, have somebody who shakes hands with everybody. Now think about that. If you have somebody who shakes hands with everybody, can there be anyone in the room who didn't shake hands with anyone? No, there can't. So if somebody shakes hands with everyone, then you cannot have a degree zero. What this means is that no matter what, there will actually only be n minus 1 choices for the degrees. So what we do is we set up our problem like this. We say we have n people, those are the, the pigeons, and we have n minus 1 options for the degrees. Those are like the pigeon holes. So when we try to fit the pigeons into the pigeon holes, there will be a pigeon hole, in this case a degree, that is shared by at least two pigeons, or people in this case. So we can conclude that one of these degrees, some degree, some degree inside of here, maybe it's five, maybe it's something else, there will be at least two people who share the same degree. Now we don't know which two people and we don't know what the degree is, but we do know that the statement holds. If you had fun with this, quick tip, then check out our new channel, which is called Spoonful of Maths. And in Spoonful of Maths, you get quick doses of fun maths in this kind of way. So see you there.